COVID-19 Compliance and Enforcement Task Force began operations on April 20, 2020, with a mandate to ensure that businesses within the public and private sectors adhere to guidelines outlined in the Emergency Powers Regulation and any other regulation that followed during our state of emergency. We have a new SRO, as Mr. Henry stated earlier, that comes into effect Saturday the 9th, and it will go until Saturday the 23rd. The purpose of the Compliance and Enforcement Task Force is to ensure that businesses and public transportation, including buses, taxis, and ferries, comply with the health and security measures outlined by the government of St. Kitts and Nevis on the advice of the National Health Operations Center and the National Emergency Operations Center to ensure the Federation remains a safe and healthy place to live, work, and do business. The objective of the, of the task force is to ensure strict adherence to the regulations outlined in the various SROs on the relaxation of businesses to operate during the days of limited operations. And from last night, we were told that those days will now increase to five days, Monday to Friday, in the next week. The task force is made up of officers from the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force, Customs and Excise, Fire and Rescue Services, Environmental Health Department, Consumer Affairs, and the Labor Department. At this time, I wish to thank the men and women who work tirelessly, who suffers hostility by a few, especially those, some of those bus drivers, but are encouraged by the majority of civic-minded individuals. The task force has a number of areas of focus and those include Regulation 7, which does not change, has been the same since the regulations came into effect, which speaks to social and physical distancing. Regulation 14, that speaks to suspension of all retail liquor licenses. Regulation 15 speaks to the wearing of masks in public place. Regulation 8, speaks to the passenger buses and ferries and the number of passengers that each can carry. Regulation 17 speaks to the hygiene protocols. And regulation, regulation 18 gives the power of the COVID-19 task force. Regulation 19 speaks to the penalties for breaking any of these. And the penalty could be up $5,000 or six months imprisonment or both. At this time, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Kennedy De Silva, Controller of Customs, Sergeant Sophia Henry, who is the liaison officer for the task force, Mr. Osbert Franz, uh, Mr. Abia Samuel, Mrs. Langley Stevens, Dr. Hazel Laws, our CMO, Miss Ophelia Blanchett, Miss Kebas, Miss Fetty, and especially to the Chamber of Industry and Commerce who are helping, assisting us greatly in ensuring that their members adhere to the regulations. I would also like to thank the staff at Immigration, especially my deputy, as well as my management staff who allowed me to spend a lot of time here as we have to deal collectively with this pandemic to ensure that our nation keep um, level that curve that we also pray and hope for. So the, the, I said earlier that the task force was established on the 20th of April, and from the 20th of April to the 8th of May today, we visited 852 businesses. We got a statistic from the Inland Revenue indicated that we have over 5,000 businesses in St. Kitts. And so it will take us quite a while to get to all of them. We have completed 852, and these businesses range from salons, barber shops, bakeries, clothing stores, doctor's offices, supermarkets, mini-marts, government departments, 
pharmacies, furniture traders, hardware stores, professionals, food vendors, taxi operators, bus operators, rum shops, broker agents, restaurants, village shops, lawyers, offices, car dealership, bank insurance, and other, which includes construction site, mechanic shops, and um, welding shops, etc. So far, we have seen that um, of the, the number of businesses adhering to the six feet distances, is have 494 of the 850, 852. 30 square foot per person observation, we have 317. Distance marking, uh, 299. The face mask we, is posing a, a little bit of a problem, but it is still very good if because it's 695 of 852. And we, we are finding that, as most persons would have said before me, that the majority of persons are observing these, but we still want to ensure that everyone adhere to the wearing of the mask. The sanitization of the doors, um, the latest thing that the bus drivers are asking if government is going to give them the, the sanitization because they cannot afford it. I would just want to, at this stage, encourage all of us to be our brother's keeper. We all see persons where, with poor not wearing their masks. We all see persons who are not observing the six feet distance. I mean, I drove across the Bay Road this afternoon coming here, and the line of persons I saw at a supermarket, and everybody were so clustered, but the police officers were there trying to ensure that um, persons maintain distance. So let us continue. We are on a good path. We've leveled the curve, but we have heard about what can happen if we have a surge, <coughs> a second wave, and so let us all endeavor to, to keep that curve down at the bottom where it is right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>